hello and welcome I'm Sarah Payne uh, and this is a short video demonstrating installing Ubuntu server I'm actually doing it through VirtualBox to enable the recording it is also part of a large guide that I've made into installing OpenSIM on Windows and Ubuntu and this is just the first video in the series that starts off with actually setting up Ubuntu server so let's do that now just while it's launching there will be points that I do pause the recording of the video while something is processing because you don't need to watch everything if you had your own server and you were physically launching this from something equivalent to a USB or any other device a network connection was the same medium on this is what you would be presenting with to start with from here it is just a case of following it through I'll scroll down in this window here capture the device right so start by choosing your language English I'm going to update the installer if you downloaded a recent version you would probably not need to do that I will pause here until the update from the installer has finished okay so once that's finished it will give you the options to change the language it's just using the cursor keys and a space bar cursor key again enter key to select obviously you would choose whatever language is correct for yourself change the keyboard variant if you need to and then done you can change these network configurations if you need to it is unlikely that you will unless you're setting up something complicated in which case you probably don't want to be watching a first time video Again, proxy there are reasons you may want to change that but this is a video aimed at the first time installers and the proxy is not necessary change the mirror address if you like but the default will be absolutely fine we're going to choose to use the entire disk in this case we're going to set it with LVM again not important I'm not going to in encrypt it just because I'm going to erase this afterwards though you would probably want to consider that in a real world scenario and I'm not going to customize it gives you a summary of the storage configuration so you can go back reset I'm just going to accept it by clicking done standard warning continue now in here I am going to actually set up with my own personal name um, generally you might not do that but as I said earlier this video is part of a larger guide so I will be at the end of this video doing a little section that is specific towards a later video just press the tab key to go down a level I was using tab intermittently there you will almost certainly want open SSH server but if you don't you could skip that I'm not going to import keys from anywhere and we're just going to go to done again you could import keys but it's probably better to add them manually there's a whole selection of things that are frequently wanted you can choose to install here a 
just to get the install running. We don't need any of them and they can all be manually installed later anyway. I'm just going to pause the video once more while it finishes this little section. Okay, well that took a few minutes. Um, however, we are back in business now. So once it's finished, you can just click reboot. And it may throw us, probably this is because I'm using a virtual machine and I need to remove the optical drive from the virtual machine then start again. So bear with me just a moment, please. Okay, so we're fully set up now. We've just restarted. And in just a moment, it will ask for a username and password. There we go. And that's it. The installation is finished. Anybody not watching as part of the video series for Open Simulator, you can just stop now. This next bit is moving from where we are now to roughly where a hosted server will be when they first give you your login details. This is slightly different. In the installation process, it asks us for a username and password, it, but it doesn't set up a root password. And when you get a server from a host, typically what you have is a root account and a root password. So I'm just going to create the root password and then I'm going to remove the user password that I created just now. Okay, that's got set the root account password. Um, we can see this because if I now do su root, we're now logged in as root. That's got a root password set up. The next stage is going to be in a different video, but we're going to use SSH to connect to this machine. And from there, set up the security. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.